Um, both of you, um, uh, good to see you again. Uh, both of you have uh, are at the cold face of this for consumers in terms of the challenges around all the issues that are addressed by this bill. I just wonder if you could just share, uh, just very briefly, the, sort of the real life examples of why this bill is so important and what difference it will make to consumers. If I could start with you. Could you start okay, with well, I can give you some examples uh, from the past so you can see the, the, what we, the consumers or us face. So um, I already talked about the secondary ticketing problem, but I give you another example. Uh, during uh, COVID, there were a lot of issues about people getting the refunds that by the law, they uh, were entitled, and many people couldn't really get the refunds. I will give you another example um, in, the, in the digital side, for example, that is in the consumer side, but on the digital side. At the moment, as uh, you have heard from, um, from the CMA, in uh, digital advertising is um, basically controlled by two companies, which is uh, Google and Facebook. Google have doubled its uh, revenue on digital advertising since 2011, and Facebook used to make only five pounds, or you know, less than five pounds per user, and uh, more recently is now around 50 uh, pounds per user. Google charge for this pay for advertising around 30% more than other uh, search engine. All that costs translate in the products that we buy. Uh, so we will expect that once these are pro-innovation, pro-competitive um, <coughs> regulatory framework is put in place, we will see this translate in prices. We will also be translate, see a net uh, in more choice, in particular on the data. We know at the moment it's very difficult for consumers to have a choice on how much of our data is being used for um, targeted advertising, and it's because we don't have a choice in a way. So you will see examples um, uh, on that. And, and we will say that when we talk to consumers, in particular on the issue of about data, for example, they feel uh, disempowered. When we talk to consumers about the problems they face uh, in some of these markets where there is high levels of detriment, they also feel uh, disempowered. Thank you. So I think there's a lot of good in, in the bill, to be absolutely clear. I want to echo first comments about um, a lot of the positives. And it's been a long time coming and testament to the subservants and the department who have, um, who have stuck with it. Um, I think the main lens through which we see the impacts of potential changes within the bill are, are through, is through the cost of living. So at the moment, I mean, it's, it's, it's not exactly um, headline news that people are struggling um, with their bills. And you know, one of the main measures that we look through is um, we look at something which we call um, whether one of our clients is in a negative budget. It's whether their essential income, whether their income, sorry, meets their essential outgoings. And about 52% of our debt advice clients now can no longer meet their, um, their essential outgoings, not desirable essential outgoings with their income. And I think two where, where areas where this can make a real difference is one of the real frustrations is you will have a debt advisor going through in detail someone's income, where they're spending their money, helping them balance the bills, etc. You see the impact of other government interventions, things like energy price support, putting money in their pockets, uprating of benefits. And then you are go coming through their expenditure and you find something like a subscription trap taking 10 quid a month, which is a huge amount for a lot of our clients, out of there unnecessarily, they didn't even know it was there, coming out of their account. Often that's people who obviously aren't online, aren't savvy, aren't combing their bills um, every, every month because they've got a lot on. Hugely frustrating, things like this, especially strengthened, could tackle that. You'll see similar things where people are just about balancing their monthly income with their expenditure, and they get hit by some you know, big sort of scam bill, let down by a company, who too often obviously aren't held to account in the right way, and obviously it's a bit of a tangential example in, a, in some ways, but the hope is obviously the CMA's increased ability to act, increased ability to, in effect, in effect disincentivise poor behaviour by consumers, will lessen the sorts of instances that we see there as well. 